Hi, my name is Pat Clay. This is another narrated PowerPoint that I provide from my YouTube channel, Prof Clay A Plus Clinicals. This is on breastfeeding for nursing students, what you need to know. Prefacing this presentation are the concepts of need to know and nice to know. Need to know things are essential for safe and effective care. Safety could be compromised if the information was not known. Care could be insufficient. Now, nice to know things augment your knowledge base. They support critical thinking and assist with adapting to changing situations. It separates the unlicensed from the professional. This presentation has a lot of need to know and a lot more nice to know because it does separate the unlicensed from the professional. Let's talk first about resources that inform us about breastfeeding. First and foremost for all women is the La Leche League, formed in 1956 by mothers for mothers. Resources include a Facebook support, support group and a website with thorough coverage of all aspects of breastfeeding. Three other resources include WIC, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, which provides federal grants to states for supplemental foods, health care referrals, and nutrition education for low-income, pregnant, breastfeeding, and non-breastfeeding postpartum women, and to infants and children up to age five who are found to be at nutritional risk. Then there's Baby Friendly USA. They state on their website, our story begins in 1991 when the World Health Organization and the United Nations Children's Fund launched the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, a global program to encourage the broad scale implementation of the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding and the International Code of Marketing breast milk supplements or substitutes. And then of course, last but not least is the American Academy of Pediatrics. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends breastfeeding as the sole source of nutrition for your baby for about six months and can be continued as long as both mother and baby desire it. On their website, there are many articles to explain how breastfeeding not only provides excellent nutrition, but also sets baby up for healthy growth and development. You might be saying at this point, well, I've breastfed my own children, so I'm fully prepared to help a new mom. Well, don't rely on your personal experience or the experience of others. Talking about your own experience is self-disclosure and may not only be annoying to the mother, but also disclosing personal information about yourself or your family could generate vulnerability. Just as every delivery is different, every breastfeeding experience is likely to be different. Having said all that, there might be an appropriate time to share word what you say very carefully. Asking the mother about her experiences with breastfeeding for herself or family members and friends may open up opportunities to dispel myths about breastfeeding. You might also be saying, well, I've never breastfed a baby or been close to anyone who has. How can I help a new mother? Well, there's some things you certainly can do. First of all, if there's a lactation specialist in your institution, consult them. That's their job. Next, learn a few basics. That would include the vocabulary of breastfeeding, the physiological process of breastfeeding, how to hold the baby and encourage latching on, and how to prepare and maintain the environment for the mother while breastfeeding in the busy acute care environment. Let's talk about the vocabulary of breastfeeding. There are a few excellent websites, not to mention your textbook, that provide you a list of words to know about breastfeeding. Here is one site that might be helpful. Here are some of the terms on that site. Latching on, let down reflex, kangaroo care, colostrum, foremilk, hind milk, mastitis, rooting, and lanolin. You'll hear those terms a lot when you're dealing with a breastfeeding mom. Let's talk about the physiologic process of breastfeeding. Breast milk is produced by supply and demand. The more the breast is emptied, the more milk will be produced. Breast milk takes about three to four days to come in, that is to start production. However, before that, the colostrum is produced and is adequate for a baby. There are stages of milk as the infant nurses, colostrum, foremilk, and hind milk. 
you might hear other terms, but those are the three we're familiar with. The formula quenches the baby's thirst, contains lactose and protein, not high in calories or fat, it's thin and watery. The hind milk is thick and creamy texture, high in fat and calories, and found near the end of pumping session or nursing session. Here's an article about the components of human breast milk from macronutrient to microbiome and microRNA. They state, in the case of four milk released by the mammary gland, the fat content is relatively low and increases with feeding, whereas hind milk has higher fat content. The protein and lactose contents are not significantly different between them. Colostrum is low in fat, but high in protein and is relatively rich in immune protective components such as immune globulin A, lactoferrin, which help prevent neonatal infections. So basically eat your meat and potatoes before you have your dessert. Here's important information. Mothers should stop breastfeeding but can feed expressed milk according to CDC if the mother has untreated active tuberculosis or she has varicella or chicken pox. Reasons a mother should not breastfeed her infant, according to CDC.gov, Center for Disease Control, are if the infant is diagnosed with galactosemia, they will require a special formula in that case. If the mother is infected with HIV, if the mother is infected with T-cell lymphotropic virus type 1 and type 2, if the mother is using illicit street drugs, now, temporarily not breastfeed or feed expressed bre breast milk prior to the reason you can't breastfeed uh, because it won't be tainted with um, radioactive materials for imaging or something like that. So that would be mother is infected with untreated brucellosis. Mother is taking certain medications. She can express breast milk prior to starting that medication and then feed the baby that while she's on the medication and for a period of time after. Mother is undergoing diagnostic imaging. I believe you can then breastfeed probably 72 hours after the diagnostic imaging. Mother has active uh, herpes simplex virus infection with lesions on the breast. She may feed from the unaffected breast with the lesions completely covered. Okay, so some reasons why women choose not to breastfeed. Well, it might affect the libido. Well, you have to supplement the infant diet with vitamins D and K, which are fairly low in breast milk. Those vitamins are messy and stinky. It also takes time to sit and allow the infant to empty breast completely, especially if the infant tends to be a lazy eater or falls asleep while nursing. It's hard work to pump while at work. Well, the lactation room might be a long way from your unit. Some moms are unwilling to limit alcohol and caffeine intake, which do go through the breast milk and affect the baby or the infant has trouble latching on, or the woman has inverted nipples, or there's not enough milk supply measured by infant weight gain. Others can engage in feeding time with infant by feeding from a bottle. Okay, how about reasons to encourage breastfeeding? Well, it's a natural way to feed a human infant. It's nutritionally sound. It promotes health in the short and long term for both the mother and the infant. It can be safer than bottle feeding as the milk is at the perfect temperature and sterile. It promotes the mother's health and it promotes bonding. It's a natural way to feed a human infant. Let's talk a little bit more about that. All mammals feed their babies using mammary glands. Here are some pictures of animals feeding their babies. So cute. And then a whale, of course. And then, of course, the mom. Let's talk about how it's nutritionally sound. Here is a chart that shows the nutritional components of breast milk. Minerals and vitamins, hormones and growth factors, microbial communities, microRNAs. Now, let's look at a little bit more comprehensive chart. Can you believe all of this is in breast milk? And look at the formula. It's very short list. Formulas try to mimic breast milk. Here's an image I found on a couple of state sites on the WIC information about breast milk and formula. See the difference there as well. 
Breast milk feeding versus formula feeding. Again, the CDC has an excellent website on breastfeeding an infant and talks about uh, breastfeeding versus bottle feeding or formula feeding. Understanding how breastfeeding works, let's talk a little bit about the process. First, there's a letdown. The letdown is triggered by hearing the baby cry, the suckling of the baby, or even thinking about the baby. Then there's the fore milk first, and then the body of the milk, the post milk, and then we're going to talk a little bit about maintenance of that supply. Remember, the breast has to be completely emptied to be able to com continue to produce supply and demand. Okay, breast milk expression and storage. This is uh, the pumping apparatus that's needed. There are special bottles to put the pumped milk in that then you can go to the freezer. Be sure that you attend to that. And then here's an excellent chart on how to store human milk. Um, really excellent. If it's freshly expressed, it can be up to four hours at the countertop, four days in the refrigerator, or six to 12 months in the freezer. And then if it was thawed, being previously frozen, it can stay on the countertop for one to two hours in the refrigerator for a day, never be refrozen. And then if a baby has eaten out of the bottle, it can only uh, be out for two hours and then must be discarded because there are germs in that bottle from sucking on it. This chart is from the CDC, USDA, and Health and Human Services. What can you as a nursing student do to support a breastfeeding mother? There's three basic important things. Number one, control the environment. Put a do not disturb sign out. This mom needs peace to feed her baby and doesn't need a lot of people in the room, distracting the baby from nursing. So try to control that environment and the traffic flow. Second, monitor by weighing that baby. Make sure that baby's gaining weight, uh, that there is an adequate milk for that baby, the wet diapers are wet, and then Show the mom resources, excellent resources. Here are some. Uh, there's, of course, the La Leche League, which we already talked about. And then the WIC website from USDA has an excellent Breastfeeding 101 program. Lots of questions, answers, how to express and pump, and then going back to work with practical information. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. I hope you really dive into this and learn a lot more of the nice to know information that will help you to respond to changing situations and to your patients' needs. You can find more narrated PowerPoints on my YouTube channel at Prof Clay A Plus Kunigals.